And welcome to another edition of the Sports Betting Edge podcast presented by OddsJam.com, home to the number one tools in the sports betting industry. I am your host, Anthony Servino. Follow me on Twitter at the Real NFL Guru. Follow the show at OddsJam. We can be found at all the top social media and podcast platforms. Uh, and it is Sunday morning. It is the Sunday morning of NFL Week 8. We have a loaded uh, slate for this Halloween edition of the Sports Betting Edge podcast. What we're going to do today, as always, we're going to go through some last-minute plus EV betting opportunities uh, using the terrific tools over at OddsJam.com. Uh, and remember, uh, we are live on Twitch right now. This video will also be syndicated to the YouTube channel. Uh, so please be sure to subscribe, hit the alert icon so you can be notified anytime Odds Jam drops new content. Hit the like button if you hear anything uh, that interests you that you actually like. And also feel free to comment. And while we're live, uh, if you're catching us live right now, be sure to ask questions. We're trying to grow this uh, this Twitch channel, uh, and while we're live, I will certainly answer each and every question uh, as we grow and as they, uh, you know, and as you guys ask them uh, pertaining to sports betting. So let's get into it. And as always, I have the Odds Jam page uh, on the big uh, rectangle on your screen. I am in the little rectangle. Uh, of your screen and uh the if you go to if you're like uh go to odds jam right now right you click on betting tools and you click on the positive ev page it will redirect you here where i am if you want to know what positive ev betting is not only is there a lot of uh terrific content on it uh on the youtube channel you can click this question mark there's a quick little uh primer here there's also an odds jam blog uh if, if you go over here you see the blog you click on that there's articles about uh positive ev betting as well uh to educate yourself and of course if you need further assistance as i did uh you could reach out you can email odds jam you can reach out to odds jam on twitter at odds jam and they will answer your questions they will tell you how to become a profitable sports better over time using this plus ev tool there's also arbitrage betting which is absolutely positively risk-free profit uh, using the arbitrage tool. Uh, when it comes to the plus EV betting, I'm going to give you a quick tour. Uh, you'll see a calculator here. And this is obviously a soccer matchup. And with plus EV betting, you don't even have to watch the damn sport to bet on it uh, because it all goes off of probability. It goes off of expected value percentage return. Uh, and if you click this calculator here, it'll tell you how much of your bankroll you should be wagering uh, using the Kelly multiplier calculator. It tells you the matchup uh, this is for. It tells you the odds uh, of the side that you should be betting on. In this case, it's over three and a half goals. And it tells you the win percentage. Uh, you know, what's better than that? And if you follow the process to the T, I promise you, you're not going to win every time. Nothing's a guarantee in sports or in life. But over time, over the course of 10, 50, 100, 250, 500 bets, if you're doing it right, following the process and following the odds jam strategy, you will become profitable sports better over time. I promise you that. I've made over $3,500 since I've been using the tools at odds jam. Um, you know, in, and, and I really started NFL week one um and then like i, I kind of you know spiraled into the plus ev betting i started with arbitrage got into the plus ev and now i'm pretty much wagering on everything and uh you can handicap these things and even if you're not like i'm an nfl guy clearly i 
will like go to basketball uh, matchups and basketball props, especially. You do like thirty seconds, a, a minute of research. You see recent trends. Uh, you see recent performance history for some of these props, and you can really handicap. Like, let's say if there's a a fifty one percent win percentage, and you see this player. Oh well, he's been uh, going over the total points in four out of the past five games, and oh by the way, uh, another starter is out. Then you could basically lock it up and maybe wager even more than the calculator tells you. And the same thing, let's say there's a 10% plus EV return. It's more of a long shot. It's plus 250 odds. It doesn't look like it's going to hit. Uh, maybe you don't. You want to wager a little bit less than the calculator is telling you. You can do that too. So you can handicap these things. Uh, you know, These are some of the best tools I have ever seen. If not, they are, in fact, the best tools I've ever seen or used for Oz Jam. Uh, you know, they put the mathematical approach into sports betting they give you the mathematical edge over the sports book and i'm not a math guy right uh we have terrific very very smart educated people behind the scenes at odds jam who created this much much more smarter than i am i'm a user of the website and the tools just like you um so I'm, you know, I'm proof. There's other guys like our guy Randall who's on the show every once in a while. He has a video where he's profited over like fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars using these tools. It's amazing um, what Odds Jam has done for sports betters who utilize the terrific tools. Now, enough about the actual product. Let's get into what we're all here for and the actual betting. Uh, so we're on the screen, and these odds, as always, I'm going to tell you, they're updated in real time. You hit that refresh button. It's last updated 9, 29, 24 a.m. Eastern time. Top bet, and we could, uh, you know, we could sort it by date. We could sort it by plus EV percentage. So let's start at the plus EV percentage. And the top wager here, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, New Orleans Saints, um, 11.56 plus EV betting opportunity. This bet hits, that's your expected value return. Open up the calculator. It is a 60.85% win percentage. You're suggested to wager 13.8.7% of your bankroll. And this line can be had if you're not limited. Which it happens, happens to everybody if you're profitable. Uh, minus 120 odds, I forgot to bet MGM. The odds jam perfect line which is derived from Pinnacle Sportsbook, the sharpest sportsbook in the world. Uh, Pinnacle has it at minus 186. Uh, Obj I, I mean, BetMGM Bergada has it at minus 120, and it's for Buccaneers' young wide receiver, Tyler Johnson's uh, receptions total. And Tyler Johnson, you know, if we think about his opportunity, Antonio Brown is sidelined, Rob Gronkowski, uh, basically 50-50 shot. He's a game-time call, practiced this week, but there is no guarantees that he's actually out there. Uh, New Orleans Saints on the road, tough matchup for Tom Brady, the touchdown uh the touchdown splits home and away. He's a night and day different quarterback this season away from Tampa Bay. Um so let's uh, look at Tyler Johnson. Pull up my research pages. Um, and we look, Tyler Johnson on the year, nine receptions, a buck 26 on 16 targets. Uh, so not utilized a lot, but really since Antonio Brown has been out the past couple of games, you know, we're seeing more Tyler Johnson. But even last week, with, Ty with Antonio Brown out, Get granted, he played a season high 47 offensive snaps, only two receptions for 16 yards on two targets. So, this tells me Tom Brady is still targeting the guys he's used to Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, and Super Bowl Lenny Fournette. Um, so we go to this game, and sure, this is telling us that the probability is there for him to hit the under. However, what do we know? Well, we know that Marshawn Lattimore, albeit he's not the same corner that he was when he played at an elite level a few years ago, but he has Mike Evans' number, big time. Um, Mike Evans last year played the Saints and Lattimore three times, scored two touchdowns, uh, but in those games where he scored two touchdowns, it was his only reception. And in those two games where he had the one reception and one touchdown, he had two and three yards, respectively. 
So because Tom Brady knows Mike Evans is likely going to be blanketed and probably shut down by Marshawn Lattimore, um, maybe we see a little bit more Tyler Johnson. However, because this is an 11.56% expected value return, I'm going to place this wager because that percentage is so high. I am more apt to take these, even though I think it's going to go the other way. That return is so damn juicy. Uh, you got to take a bite out of the orange, out of the proverbial orange. Uh, let's go to the next one 8.22 percent plus ev return and this is khalil herbert's uh reception total over under one and a half plus 150 at caesars plus 115 at at uh you know it's the odds jam perfect line so let's see khalil herbert and khalil herbert man let me tell you something this guy's been nothing but impressive since um since David Montgomery went down uh, with his injury. In fact, like, you know, in the, the first game, Khalil Herbert goes 18 for 75 on the ground, uh, was not targeted in a passing game. That was a game Damian Williams had a solid day as well and scored. Then Damian Williams goes on the damn COVID list. Uh, week six, we see the emergence of Khalil Herbert, 19 for 97 and one on the ground, two of three for 15 yards as a receiver. Following week against Tampa Bay, um, back-to-back weeks, by the way, against Green Bay and Tampa Bay, week six and seven, plays 51 snaps, season high. 18 for 100 against one of the toughest and most stout rush defenses in the NFL. Five of five targets for 33 yards. Damian Williams, who we thought was going to be the pass catching back, non-factor. They are now deploying Khalil Herbert uh, really as the every down back. So this reception total, forget about it. Uh, I like that percentage, but I I just don't think it's feasible, especially against the 49ers where Javon Kinlaw, their second-year run-stuffing defensive tackle, missed some time already this year, uh, had season-ending surgery this week. So that rushing stop gap is no longer there. Khalil Herbert might start running, and he might not stop. I believe Khalil Herbert's going to run down the throats of the San Francisco 49ers and lead the Chicago Bears to a win. I I think that's very, very much possible. Uh, And it's going to be all on Khalil Herbert if the Bears do, in fact, win. So this receiving total, I'm not going to touch it. Um, Despite the plus EV return, I I just don't think it happens. I, I think we're flushing our money away. The next one, as you can see, the check mark is one I already took. And, you know, I said I'd be here 9.15. I was a couple minutes late because I was placing these wagers already. I wanted to get a little bit of a head start because I'm always going. Always on this plus EV page at, 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 um, at Odds Jam. Always working, always grinding, always wagering, as you should be. Um, A.J. Brown, 6.94% plus EV return. He is getting a matchup, right? The Indianapolis Colts, their defense is pretty good, right? But at stopping the run, their front seven is terrific. Their secondary has been atrocious this season. It's also a familiar foe for the aforementioned A.J. Brown. So let's look at the historical production for A.J. Brown in these matchups. And A.J. Brown historically hasn't really gotten going against the Colts, but the Colts secondary was better through the years. The last time these two teams played um, earlier this year, I I believe that was the game A.J. Brown might have suffered the injury. The Titans won 25-16, only had one carry for three yards. Um, The the one before that where it was healthy, he goes four for 98 and a touchdown. It was his best performance against the Indianapolis Colts in his career now. We know Ryan Tannehill the past couple of games. He's getting hot. A.J. Brown is now healthy. He's getting hot. Julio Jones has been ruled out of this game, so there's no Julio to take those deep balls. It's going to be an A.J. Brown game. You can get this bet at uh, Fox Bet, minus 105, minus 141 at Pinnacle, and the receiving yards over 75 and a half yards. Um, A.J. Brown, like, you know, like I said, had a slow start, as did this Tennessee passing attack. And a lot of it uh, is the fact that A.J. Brown and Julio were both dinged up. Julio still dinged up. Julio perennially dinged up. 
But, you know, A.J. Brown, once he's on, he's on. And in the past two games against Buffalo and Kansas City, and Buffalo, one of the best defenses in the NFL, especially in the secondary, KC, their defense is terrible, but you can throw on them a little bit. Uh, still top 10 in terms of fantasy points allowed for all you fantasy players. Uh, so pretty good. But A.J. Brown, 7 for 91. Eight for Buck 33 and one last week, and back to back games north of this total of 75 and a half yards. I believe that continues. And one of his best matchups that he has seen all season long now that he's a healthy wide receiver. I'm all in. I pushed the chips in on AJ Brown. Um, so where are we now? Let's see. Let's go to the next one. Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers, the, you know, as ugly as it sounds, the number one wide receiver for the New England Patriots of Mac Jones. And Jacoby Myers, you know, I don't even think he scored a touchdown in his career, you know, short career, even though he gets a ton of targets, receptions, and yards. His receiving yard total is 55 and a half. And Jacoby Myers, this Chargers defense, they, you, can be, you can beat them. You could beat them on the ground. They're one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. However, they're secondary. Remember last year's Los Angeles Rams, um, and, and they were completely locked down with the secondary of Jalen Ramsey and Troy Hill and Darius Williams, uh, John Johnson, two of which uh, Troy Hill and John Johnson now in Cleveland. But... Brandon Staley was a defensive coordinator. Brandon Staley, now the head coach of the... Chargers, he has now produced one of the best secondaries in the league. They're a top five secondary. And now they're going up against Matt Jones and Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers has gone over 55 and a half yards in one. Well, actually, I'm looking at snap counts. Excuse me. He's gone over 55 and a half yards in one, two, three out of his past five games. Has not gone over that total in back to back weeks. And now he is getting one of the best secondaries in the NFL. Uh, he could be peppered with targets all he wants. Um, I, I just don't see this receiving yard total happening with a 6.94% plus EV return. Take the under at minus 105 at Fox Bet. Um, again, this could be a running, uh, running centric game, especially now that Damian Harris has gotten going. Uh, I don't know if they want Mac Jones dropping back because with this ground game going behind Damian Harris, this Patriots offense a little bit more efficient. We're also seeing Hunter Henry get going a little bit, Kendrick Bourne getting going on the outside. So I, I feel pretty safe. You know, I don't feel com uh, completely safe. I feel pretty safe taking the under on Jacoby Myers receiving yard total. Jacoby, um, Devin Singletary, I passed on. This uh, receiving yard total at minus 115, uh, 12 and a half yards. I, I completely passed on it. That was open before I came on the and started doing the show. I, I'm, I'm a little bit of afraid of it because we just don't know how the Buffalo Bills are going to use their running backs. Sometimes it's Moss. Sometimes it's Singletary. Sometimes it's both. And back in week two, because uh, what do we know about the Miami Dolphins? Their defense has not been as advertised. You can gash them through the air. You can gash them on the ground. Running backs have really, really terrific production. In fact, in week two, Singletary scored, uh, scored once. Moss scored twice. They both had pretty productive games. Devin Singletary as a receiver this year. Um, he has actually gone the under the 12 and a half yards in every game but one, which was last week against Tennessee. So what scares me? The fact that not only he didn't go like one reception for 13 yards, two receptions for 13 yards, he had five targets, five receptions, 16 yards. What if they are going to start utilizing Devin Singletary as a receiver out of the backfield? Now, Tennessee won that game. They had to throw a little bit more, more check down opportunities. I don't see that happening. So maybe, maybe I'm talking myself into this Devin Singletary under. Um, anything can happen here. I might actually go ahead after I wrap up and take this. Um, but, you know, I, again, I, I'm kind of on the fence with it. But now that I look at it, now that, that I consider, well, what, what was the difference in this Buffalo-Tennessee game? Why so many targets and receptions for Devin? Oh, well, 
Tennessee dominated that football game. Uh, different type of game script, different type of Brian Dayball play calling, and here we are sitting against Miami, a game that, like, you're not going to have to check down to Devin Singletary, uh, Singletary and Moss. You're going to dominate this game. Who knows if Josh Allen even finishes this damn game and not sitting in the third quarter because he perennially dominates the Miami Dolphins. In fact, here's uh, here's something terrific. Josh Allen, um, where is it? Josh Allen in his career against the Miami Dolphins. Josh Allen, uh, 731 yards, 19 touchdowns, five picks, 375 rushing yards, three touchdowns, seven games. Josh Allen absolutely slays the Miami Dolphins. He, you know, like, you know, like uh, the Miami Dolphins are a, are a Snickers bar. And Josh Allen is that five-year-old kid in the dinosaur costume. Cannot wait to get home and rip it apart. Got to use a little bit of Halloween analogy here. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going down. Uh, where are we time-wise? This, these things uh, seem to fly by. We're only 20 minutes in, so we do have some time. Um, uh, let's go to... Here we go. Here's one I took. You see the check mark. You already know I took it. I'm not lying. Uh, and, and believe me, I take a lot of bets. 5.89% uh, return. I'm a volume plus EV better, folks. Might as well get that out there. Like some people, they take a couple. Like I'm a volume guy. Uh, because as I, my guy Alex from Odds Jam, you'll see him in all these videos. Um, as he says... And you'll even see them comment back if you're engaging on um, on the the YouTube comments. And you know, I remember somebody asked for strategy. So they basically, the more bets you place, the more yeah, you 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 pound the plus EV bets. Um, and in the end, you'll most likely be profitable. And there's less risk with the more you are wagering because the probability of numbers. So it, Manny Sanders minus one fifteen BetMGM Brigada Caesars DraftKings. Perfect odds jam, perfect line, minus a buck fifty three. Longest reception for the big play guy in the Buffalo Bills passing attack. Emmanuel Sanders, twenty two and a half yards. He can do that in his sleep. Um, that's not very long for a guy like Manny Sanders, who in his NFL career he's a big play. Uh, speedster he's a burn around the outside can move him around the formation a little bit but he gets open uh and in fact he's really taken over like cole beasley was uh, had a terrific year last year it's been emmanuel sanders really putting on a show as the number two wide receiver uh to stefan diggs and at 22 and a half yards, Miami Dolphins defense, like I said, they're not as advertised. You can beat this secondary, one of the higher priced secondaries in the league, but man, you can torch them. And Josh Allen will, in fact, torch them. Uh, let's go back to, where are we? Are we in this game still? Um, Manny wasn't that busy. He went two for 48. So two receptions, 48 yards, right? Um, in week, uh, I believe it was week two, when these two teams played. That's 24 yards a catch. He's averaging, what, uh, a yard and a half north of this over of 22 and a half yards. I smashed it. I went heavy on it. I believe it happens. Uh, Justin Herbert picks, I'm not going to touch. He's pretty efficient. Had the bad game against uh, Baltimore. He's coming off the bye. He should put it together against the New England Patriots, who have shown weakness in their defense to terrific quarterbacks like Dak Prescott uh, two weeks ago and, and other guys this year. Yeah, they dismantle and, and destroy the New York Jets and their quarterbacks, but who doesn't? A little bit of NBA action mixed in, which I will get to at some point today. Here's another one. Um, Mikey Williams, the big play wideout with the Los Angeles Chargers, really has taken over as the number one receiver uh, in that offense. While Keenan Allen is more of the possession guy, it's really been Mike Williams. He's putting it together. He is really now, you know, Williams is a top 10 NFL draft pick a few years ago. 
hasn't, you know, and it was injuries. You know, he hasn't really lived up to expectations. He's flashed a hell of a lot. But in 2021, we are seeing the best form of Mike Williams really getting going with Justin Herbert. And Mike Williams has been a little bit dinged up, which has kind of plagued him uh, for the majority of his career. But, uh, you know, coming off, I, I believe uh, they had the bye last week. Or no, they have Ravens last week. No, they had the bye last week. Um, so coming off the – no, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Buffalo. So let's pull up Mike Williams. Um, so they did have the bye last week. Jeez. Uh, and that, now you got New England. So Mike Williams, uh, really terrific most of the year. The over-under reception total set at 5.5. The play is the under 5.6% plus EV return, plus 105 odds at the Caesar Sportsbook, minus 123 odds jam Perfect line derived from Pinnacle, the sharpest sports book in the world. Um, so we look at Mike, Mike Williams' reception totals, and he smashed five and a half, one, two, three, four, five, six, and four out of six games. But he's gone under in two of the past three. Now, the issue was Mike Williams, dealing with a knee injury, has been a little bit dinged up. Um, so could we see... The fact that, you know, now that Mike Williams coming off the bye, he's a little bit healthier, will they start involving him more? And if they do, he should blow past this five and a half reception total. I'm a little bit worried here, uh, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to take the under. What I am going to do, I want to go look at the New England Patriots because, like I said, this isn't the same Patriots defense in years past. They moved on from Stephon Gilmore. Uh, the secondary is a little bit banged up, so you can throw on them. Uh, let's go to, let's see what New England is doing. So, New England Patriots this season, where are we? They've given up 89 receptions collectively. And what I want to do, I want to see how many receivers they gave up uh, six receptions to. So, one, two, three, four. Four. So, out of all of the teams they played this season, uh, they've only allowed four wide receivers to go over five and a half receptions on them. Braxton Berrios from the New York Jets, uh, week two. Mike Evans and Antonio Brown in week four both had seven apiece. Uh, C.D. Lamb uh, last week, or the last time they played against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, back in week six, they had the Jets again last week. So, I, I mean, uh, obviously, outside of Zach Wilson, who produced seven receptions for Braxton Berrios, the two best quarterbacks the Patriots faced, Tom Brady and Dak Prescott, both produced receivers who had north of five and a half receptions. Here's the kicker now. Justin Herbert's in that conversation as one of the best quarterbacks that the Patriots have faced so far. Therefore, I think I might fade this bet altogether. It's a 5.6 return. It says to go 5.33% of your bankroll. Instead of fading it altogether, maybe you go 4% on it. Maybe you go 3.5% just to get some action because it, it could also hit since, like I said, only four receivers had more than 5.5 receptions. Uh, so the probability of, uh, of the under hitting is there. But if you look at the trend, well, Tom Brady produced receivers and Dak Prescott produced the receiver. The only outlier is Zach Wilson. I, I, I think, you know, so I wouldn't go too heavy on the under. But I, I, instead of going like 5% of my bankroll, maybe I go 35 four. Let's uh, let's see what else here. Baker Mayfield under touchdown passes. He's going to play. He's banged up. The, I mean, the Browns passing attacks a mess. They're a run centric team. Now you can throw on Pittsburgh uh, minus 160 odds. You got to lay a lot to win a little. Um, is the probability of there of this bet hitting? Of course, pinnacle odd champ perfect line minus 229. I mean, it's it's about as close to a lock, they believe, uh, as as anything out there today. Uh, let's see, where is Baker against Pittsburgh in his career? And these were better deep Pittsburgh defenses uh, Mayfield has faced in the past. But Mayfield, 
Um, he's actually in his first two career games against Pittsburgh, uh, threw for two and two. Then he had three straight games where he threw for one. And then uh, in the playoffs last year, he threw for three. So the probability of the NL Bakers banged up and like OBJ's up in the air to play, no Kareem Hunt, who's the superior receiver out of the backfield. I, I'm just, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm just out on these odds. Uh, because what if you do lay... Like, you know, uh, okay, it's telling you 8.58% of your bankroll. What if you go and do that? Um, minus 160, the return isn't that great, and all of a sudden you're out. So this is one I just don't like. What I would do, you can use these plus EV tools to build a parlay, so maybe you use it as a leg in a parlay, uh, and that is a way to utilize this Baker Mayfield bet. Uh, Deontay Johnson receiving yards. No Juju Smith-Schuster. We know the Browns' secondary isn't the greatest in the world. Uh, I know they brought in a bunch of guys to uh, bolster it, but again, this is still the Browns, and they haven't really uh, played up to par. They get the... And it's at home. Let's see. So Deontay Johnson is the number one receiver in Pittsburgh, with or without Juju, and Juju's not going to play, and Ebron's not going to play, and with Ebron out, there's a couple of Pat Fryermuth plus EV wagers that I took. They might be gone now, but I, you know, I think it's over uh, his reception total and yardage total. Uh, he had career highs last week, and I think uh, Fryer was going to be the biggest beneficiary uh, in those short and intermediate routes of Juju being out. But this over under 68 and a half yards for Deontay Johnson, minus 110 Brigada Bet MGM, minus 143 Pinnacle. I mean, the odds jam perfect line, 5.07% plus EV return. So, how many receivers have the Cleveland Browns allowed to go over 68 and a half? So, how many receivers have they allowed uh, 69 yards on them? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Um, so you're not going to get a lot of production. And again, this is a home game for the Cleveland Browns. I'm still probably going to take this bet because it's Deontay Johnson. In the past two games that Deontay Johnson has played against uh, the Cleveland Brown, he's gone for 117 and 96, respectively. Uh, 2019 were the other two games because he was a little bit banged up uh, last year. But 2019 were the last uh, two games he's faced uh, the Cleveland Browns. And he wasn't really their featured guy yet in 2019. So I won't really count them. He was like number four in the depth chart. But now that he's stepped up the past two games, he's really played exceptionally well against the... Uh, Cleveland Brown. So I'm going to hit this over here. Um, even Chase Claypool, he's another terrific play. Uh, he's gone for 59 plus yards in all three career games against the Browns. He had four plus receptions, including five in his past two against the Cleveland Browns, and he scored three total touchdowns in his past two games against the Cleveland Browns. Let's go to a couple of basketball ones mixed in. Here's another plus EV that I took already, 4.46 percenter, uh, plus 100 at Caesars, the odds jam perfect line minus 127. Elijah Mitchell over 71 and a half yards. And this is one that I had to do some heavier research on because uh, the Bears, they play pretty good defense against the run. You can beat them through the air. Um so let's pull up Elijah Mitchell. Uh, like I said, I did this earlier myself personally. And Elijah Mitchell last week against the Colts, and what do we know about the Colts? They are one of the best run defenses in the NFL. 18 carries, a buck goes 7-1, and one, was not targeted in a passing game. Um, week one goes for 19 for 104 and a touchdown. It was his other... Uh, really, really good game this season against Detroit. In the middle, week two against Philly, didn't do a lot. That was a game he was banged up. Didn't play in weeks three and four. Week five against Sona, coming off the injury. A little bit more of a timeshare with Trey Sermon. It, this is Elijah 
Mitchell's backfield. Uh, last week, coming off the week six bye, he proved that he was healthy. And now against Chicago, we know that he's still healthy, isn't really dealing with anything. Um, so despite the matchup and despite the fact that Kyle Shanahan likes to use different guys, it shows that when Elijah Mitchell is healthy, uh, he is the guy. Again, the two healthiest games he's had, 18-plus carries, 104-plus yards, and a touchdown on each. I'm pushing the chips in. This is another one, plus 100 odds at Caesar Sportsbook for Elijah Mitchell's over 71.5 yards rushing. <clears throat> um. Let's take a look. Uh, where are we with time? Okay, we'll do a couple more minutes. And um, let's take a look at James Robinson. Because James Robinson has an incredible matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. It is in Seattle. However, um, I believe this is a game in which the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to win. I think they have a terrific shot. They have the better quarterback. Uh, they have the better personnel right now at the running back position. James Robinson, far superior over Alex Collins and whatever the hell else is in the backfield of the Seattle Seahawks. Um, in terms of fantasy points allowed, ja uh, the Seattle Seahawks are 31st, giving up the second most in the NFL. James Robinson, uh, really the dominant force in that backfield, gets pretty much all the snaps and all the running back touches, maybe a couple are seeded to Carlos Hyde, but it's really, as we know, James Robinson's backfield. And the over is to play 4.5% plus EV, expected return, minus 110 odds at FanDuel, minus 141 odds jam perfect line. Over 71 and a half rushing yards, and J Rob has gone over 71 and a half rushing yards in each of the past four games. Let me tell you something. Right now, I'm going to play. I like this so much. Um, and the computer that I'm on, my desktop, like my war room, um, thing's a beast. My, my little studio, my office, a little bit of a beast, right? I can't get on betting sites. I have some kind of a thing. Some kind of a proxy server that uh, the, I go to the betting site. We cannot do your location. We cannot check your location. Uh, therefore, otherwise, you would see me placing these bets live. I am working on fixing that and removing whatever it is. I'm trying to troubleshoot with Microsoft. Um, but I'm going to go on my laptop, which is right next to me, and I'm going to go to this uh, Seattle Seahawks matchup, and I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to find this J-Rob wager because it is so juicy. Um, and I, I like that, that the juice. I've been using juicy a lot today. Maybe I need some juicy fruit gum. Got to raid the kids' uh, Halloween basket. Um, so, <laughs> uh, uh, Russian Yards. James Robinson, over 73 and a half. Are you kidding me? Or over 73 and a half. Are you kidding me? Um, hits it each of the past four games. Gets one of the best, one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. One of the best matchups for enemy running backs. Uh, let's find Seattle. Let, let's give you a little bit of context on the other side of why I love it so much. Seattle has allowed one, two, three, four, five different running backs uh, to go north of 73 and a half yards. Five different ones in what? Uh, what do they play? Seven games? So only two games in which they did not allow running back to, uh, to go north of that threshold. One of them was week one against the Colts. Really, really good running team. Collectively, Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines uh, – combined for 100 yards rushing. So they would have hit uh, last year, last week against the Saints, actually, surprisingly enough, uh, Kamara 20 for 51 on the ground, 10 for a buck 28 and a touchdown as a receiver. That was the only one that collectively a team did not go over this. And again, James Robinson is the de facto running back one in Jacksonville. So uh, let's click on this calculator. Let's see how much they want me to wager and 5.02, and depending on your bankroll, uh, I'm going to go pretty heavy on this. And I just did. Went um, up to 7% of my bankroll. And I'm going to lock it up. It's locked in. I might even use that as a leg in a parlay. That's how much I like it. 
Boom. Let's go to... Uh, I wish I knew the other one we were talking about earlier that I really liked, because I would place that right now as well. Kind of a... Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, J-Rob was so nice, I had to just stop what I was doing here and, and do it. But, you know, it's part of the excitement of listening to these shows live, because, like, if they're that good that I'm jumping on it, like, right here... Here's a here's a nice one. Um, Mike Evans under sixty five and a half receiving yards. And what was I telling you earlier? What what I've been saying all week? What do I say all week going into any Saints Tampa Bay matchup? Mike Evans, Marshawn Lattimore. I, I I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know if Marshawn Lattimore uh, said something about Mike Evans' dog, but. Marshawn Lattimore steps it up. He turns it on and completely shuts down Mike Evans. In fact, 65 and a half receiving yards. Um, the last time he went over 65 and a half. Now he went for 64 uh in two in, in last year they played three games. He went for 64, uh, which doesn't even hit it, but that was like his best game last year. Um you would have to go back to November 9th, uh, 17th of 2019. He went for 69 yards. Um but really only three games in his career, uh, four games in his career, Mike Evans went over 65 and a half yards against the Saints, and Mike Evans has played um, 13 games. So what did I say? Five out of 13 games, Mike Evans went over 65 and a half. So the probability of this hitting is so great. This is another one. One, two, three, four. So, uh, so I'm sorry, I, I was wrong. Four out of 13 games, Mike Evans uh, went over this yardage. I'm going to, again, go to my sports book right now, and I'm going to place this wager. Now, because I, I'm, I'm not as confident on it because this is like those in-division matchups where anything can happen, but I'm like pretty confident. I'm not going to go a lot over the, the suggested bankroll amount, uh, but, man, like I, I'm going to certainly be all over this one right now. Um, Where are we with Mike Evans? You man, got to take it. Uh, and the expected value return, 4.43. Now I'm thinking about a James Robinson over rushing yards, a Mike Evans under receiving yards type of parlay I might build. Uh, stay tuned for that. Maybe next week I'll build a parlay. Actually, you know, try to prepare one. But I like doing things live. I like doing things, you know, uh, I like ad-libbing. Makes for a more exciting show. You get to see my reaction and hear my reaction when I'm like, oh my God, look at this. That's what's great about the NFL football and sports all together. You should see me when I'm playing my, because uh, if you're a member of all these sports books, and oh, by the way, Al, uh, there was a video released last night by Odds Jam uh, talking about all the sports books and their bonuses going on, over $18,000 in bonuses, and how to use the free bet conversion calculator. It's one of the most actionable videos that you'll find at Odds Jam. Go look at it and go listen to it. But if you're a member of all these sports books, there's casino bonuses. So you should see my reaction of me playing the slots on my phone. And like when I hit, you know, when uh, when you when the wild, when you hit the wild and then you need like the three things to go. So you go to the next bonus game. It's like I, 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 my, my eyes are bulging out and it's the biggest letdown when you get two out of three of the bars and you, and you miss the next level of the bonus game on the progressive where you can hit for 50. But that's another story for another show. Let's do one more before I begin to wrap up. Because I got a fantasy show to do, my normal fantasy show. Um, that I will be on right around 11.30. I mean, sorry, 11 o'clock today. Uh, so if you want to do some fantasy stuff, come see me um, at, at the Real NFL Guru at the FF Face Off social media. So one more. Here's a Tyler Boyd one I already took, and, you know, the, the probability of him hitting, I don't think he's had more than four, uh, five, or at more than four receptions in a few games. Not the real, not the most exciting one I want to talk about. Um, hmm. Give me something. Uh, here we go. The Friar Muth. The Friar Muth ones. Ooh, here's a Kelsey for tomorrow night. Um, 
Now, there's a Dalvin Cook one. If you saw my video from last night talking about tonight's Sunday Night Football matchup, I do like the over on Dalvin Cook's uh, reception total. Has not really been the greatest receiver this year, but he's a little bit banged up. He's absolutely smashed the Cowboys. He smashed uh, the Cowboys as a receiver uh, in his career. So I love over three and a half, especially now that he's healthy. I think he gets going tonight. And even last year when Dak didn't play, the Cowboys won in a shootout. Expect a lot of points from either end anyway. Um, but let's go to the Friar Muth. One of the, uh, you know, one of the more exciting names. Can I spell it? Yeah, Pat Friar Muth. F-R-E-I-R Muth. So let's uh, let's see what Patty Fryermuth has done and why I like him so much. Well, again, Juju's out, and with Juju out last week against Seattle, caught all seven targets. Career high reception seven. Career high targets seven. Uh, Fifty eight yards, also a career high. Forty three offensive snaps, career high. Oh, by the way, no Eric Ebron this week either. So now we get the Cleveland Browns. You can gash them a little bit uh, with the tight end. And the uh, bet here is over 33 and a half receiving yards. He hit this bet twice. And one of them, again, was last week. Uh, the other one was in week two against the Raiders. With no Juju, no Ebron, the middle of the football field belongs to Patty Fryermuth. I, I also like the over on his receptions. I, I wish I, I had the uh, Fryermuth receptions. That could be gone at this point. But it was over. It was either two and a half or three and a half. Here it is. Three and a half minus 102 at FanDuel. 3.04% plus EV return. Minus 125 odds jam. Perfect line. Um, and, uh, he, again, the two games in which he had over 33 and a half yards, 32 and a half yards, uh, he has gone over three and a half receptions. I think this is going to be another game in which Patty Fryermuth gets going and hits both of those overs, but okay, guys, that's enough. I got to go get ready for my next show. Uh, it's been a, this has been one of my favorite sports betting edge podcast episodes. I'm starting to get comfortable because when anybody does a new thing, um, it's always nerve wracking. This is a new audience. This is strictly betting content. When I was doing betting content with my fan fantasy audience. So, you know, I was a little bit nervous the past couple of weeks. I'm getting comfortable. I'm getting comfortable with the verbiage and the odds jam tools and how to present them to you. Uh, so this has been great. Last night was great. Um, good luck today on all your sports betting and fantasy endeavors. Be safe. It's Halloween. Don't do anything dumb. Um, you know, call an Uber, be safe out there. You know, um, that that's the most important thing more than anything else is, is everybody's safety, but have a great Halloween, have a great NFL week eight. If you're listening on the, uh, on Twitch or YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the alert icon. So you can be notified anytime we are live or upload a new piece of content. If you heard anything that I said that you like. Drop a comment, drop a like, all, all of your engagements trigger the algorithm and puts us in front of more people to help us grow. It takes you about two seconds to do these things. Uh, we put out free content. Uh, these are just little free actions that you can do. It takes no time at all to really make a big time difference uh, with our brand and in our lives. But have a good day. Good luck in week eight, and we will see you next time.